Hey, what's up? Operation iDroid here, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you all the features that are in the incredible GBA for iOS 2.0 application available for all iOS 7 devices on February 19th. As you just heard me say, GBA for iOS 2.0 will finally be released to the public on February 19th, 2014 at 3.45 p.m. EST. For those of you that don't know, GBA for iOS 2.0 is a Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Emulator available for jailbroken and non-jailbroken iDevices alike. But you must be running iOS 7 or above. GBA for iOS 2.0 is an update, better yet, an overhaul to the original extremely popular GBA for iOS that was developed by the boy genius, or should I say man now that he's 18, Riley Testa. Riley Tested has found a way to do the impossible again and distribute an emulator over the air to all iOS 7 devices by bypassing Apple's restrictions and I'm going to be showing you every feature that he's added to this new GBA for iOS 2.0 and how to get them to work properly. This groundbreaking application is now so close to being released and I hope you guys are ready to see all the amazing features behind all the hard work that has gone into this emulator. Alright, so once you open the GBA for iOS 2.0 application, you get a nice splash screen of the logo. Now as you can see, there's a completely new UI designed for iOS 7 and you can navigate between your games using the all GBA or GBC directory. Now I'm going to go ahead and open a game for you guys so you can see how great this application really is. Now the first thing you're going to notice is that I have a custom skin and you can get custom skins within the app or on GBA for iOS skins .com, but I'll get into that a bit more later. But the second thing you're probably noticing is that I'm playing Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, a game that was previously unable to be played on GBA for iOS and this was my favorite Game Boy Advance game and I'm so happy that we can play it now. Anyways, I'm going to open up the pause menu for you guys, and as you can see, we have return to menu, fast forward, save state, load state, cheat codes, and sustain button. The first thing I'm going to go over is the fan popular fast forward. As you can see, the fast forward works perfectly now without any sound lag. It speeds up the game and sound to perfection, and as you can see, you can switch back to normal speed without a problem. Next thing we're going to go over is save states and load states. You can remember this feature from the original GBA for iOS but it has some more features built into it. As you can see, now you can rename ROMs. For example, I'm going to call this one Destiny Islands, as well as you can protect your ROM so that it's in a different section compared to your regular saves. So as you can see, you can protect this ROM, and if you like, you can delete it by swiping to the right. As you can see, when I make another save state, you'll see that it's under General, not Protected. So this is a really cool feature added to the save state. And now I'm going to slightly move so you can see now when I load a state, it'll take me back to where I save the state. And that's how save and load states work. As well as you can see a new feature which is auto save, which occurs every time you load a state, return to menu, or quit the GBA for iOS 2.0 applications. And these are all synced via Dropbox. Now, the next two features are cheat codes and sustain button. But I'm going to be showing you these features in games that use them, for lack of a better word, better. So I'm going to return to menu here, and as you can see, when you return to menu, you get a nice new UI which blurs out the background of the game you were playing, and then shows your ROM list again, and highlights the game that you are just playing, because you are able to resume or restart the same game even if you return to menu. So that means you can go into the settings or change games without losing the progress of your other game. So for example, I'm going to go to GBC here, and then if I play Pokemon Crystal for a while, and I return to menu, then I can click on it, and it says game already in use, resume, restart, or cancel. And I'm going to go ahead and resume. As you can see, it takes me back to where I was. I'm going to return to menu again and show you now that when you restart, it restarts the game like if you just plug the game into your Game Boy. So as you can see, I can load an autosave, and it'll take me back to where I was before I returned to menu, and that's basically how the autosave works. Anyways, I'm going to return to menu here, and I'm going to go into settings. Alright, so the first setting is a returning one from the original GBA for iOS, which is frame skip. Though I recommend you keep this on auto. The next setting is audio, and you can turn this on to prefer external audio, which means that you can listen to audio from other applications that isn't GBA for iOS if you turn this switch on. 
Now the next thing is autosave as I mentioned before. Autosave if you have this switched on will create a save state whenever you load another save state or quit the game or GBA for iOS 2.0 crashes. The next is controller skins. You can have a Game Boy Advance one or a Game Boy Color one. So as you can see right now I have my custom skin. The default one you just saw is the one that comes with GBA for iOS 2.0 and when you click on the plus sign you can download skins. For example if I click on retro it will download the skin and when I click done I now have the retro skin in my GBA controller skins. Though you can also get some more skins on GBA for iOS skins.com. Now let's go check out this new skin that we just put on. As you can see, I signed it to Game Boy Advance. So whenever I open a Game Boy Advance game, it will open with that skin. And the assigned skin I have for Game Boy Color was the one that you saw previously. So, anyways, as you can see, right now I'm opening Pokemon Fire Red GBA ROM Hack Adventure Red Red Story, which is a game that I find very fun. I actually did a tutorial on how to get this on the original GBA for iOS but the reason that I open this game up is because number one I'm going to show you some more features of GBA for iOS 2.0 so the first one is you can play in landscape I'm sure you all are aware of this you could do this as well as in GBA for iOS but I'm going to be showing you the cheat codes and sustain button but let's start with sustain button when you click on it you'll get a screen like this and then you tap on the button you want to sustain and it will sustain it as you can see I clicked on B so now wherever I move I run which is very useful in games such as Pokemon and to unsustain a button is just as simple as sustaining one you go into the pause menu click sustain button and you click anywhere that there isn't a button and you unsustain the button now we're going into the next feature which is we're going to return to the menu go back into the settings and now I'm going to show you a nice feature that I enjoy very thoroughly and that is controller opacity so it was at 50% now I'm going to set it down to 15% and now you'll see that when we go back into our game by resuming now the controls are more transparent which lowers the opacity so that you can see more of the game and when you get more familiar with the controls you'll be able to play with a zero opacity and see the whole screen but anyways now we're going to the most anticipated the most requested feature of GBA for iOS 2.0 and that is cheat codes a lot of people are looking forward to this and it's so special that I made a separate video on it so right here I'm just gonna quickly show you the breakdown of how it looks when you add a cheat but I have a separate video on this as I just said so you guys can follow the link in the description for that the cheat codes work with Game Shark, Action Replay and Code Breaker but anyways let's go into the next feature now so we're gonna return to menu go back into the settings again and go to the next setting under controller opacity and that is controller vibration or vibrate on button press and I have this on and basically what it does is that if you have vibration on in the settings app for silent ring or both depending which mode you're in every time you click a button you'll get haptic feedback and you'll be able to feel a slight vibration which is awesome but anyways into the next thing you can configure buttons for made for iPhone controllers so as you guys know I did a video on how GBA for iOS 2.0 is compatible with made for iPhone controllers like the MOGA as well as if you're jailbroken you can use your PlayStation 3 controller or PS4 controller using controllers for all to play wirelessly with your GBA for iOS 2.0 now we're going to go into Dropbox Sync. I'm just going to quickly show you how it works because when I make my tutorial on how to get GBA for iOS 2.0 on February 19th, you guys will be able to see how it works. As you can see, I just went into the software update. An awesome thing that Riley was able to do that you guys will not be able to believe is that he'll be able to update GBA for iOS 2.0 after it is released. So you guys can check for updates there in software update. You guys can also rename ROMs now and not lose your data. So as you can see, I just renamed that game as well as you can share ROMs with friends. So if your iOS device is compatible with AirDrop, you can AirDrop your games into other devices. As you can see here, I'm transferring Pokemon Emerald to my iPad. So anyways, as you can see, I have Pokemon Emerald on my iPad and now you can see it's a completely different UI on the iPad. And now the controller skins are different as well. So you can get controller skins for the iPad on GBA for iOS skins.com as well. And even when you click on the menu, the pause menu is a bit different as well as the load and save state. So as you can see, I just loaded a state there, but you guys might have saw something very interesting. And when you click on the menu in some Pokemon games, you'll be able to have event distribution. And this is basically where Riley sets up events for us so that we can have some more fun with our Pokemon games. As you can see, this is Riley's shiny Geodude event that was released only for beta testers. 
because as you guys know I am a beta tester of GBA for iOS 2.0 and I'm going to go ahead and start this event here. So when you have an event, you go to event distribution, you'll download the event, and then you can start it. Now this event is very special, and I actually really enjoyed it because it was it was very humbling to see Riley showing his appreciation to the beta testers. I mean, I know I've been working hard trying to find bugs in GBA for iOS 2.0, making these videos out for you guys so that you guys can get a feel for GBA for iOS 2.0 comes out. I know it took a while to come out. But now that we're here, I hope you guys will enjoy it. But anyways, this event distribution is when you go into your room, you'll see that there's someone there. And it says, wow, look at this GameCube. I spent so much time playing this when I was younger. Oh, you're here. I've been waiting a long time for this. Who am I? Well, I should probably answer that question first. It's me, Riley. You know, the person who's been giving you all these betas? Well, for my final trick, I wanted to thank you for all the help you've been doing testing GBA for iOS 2.0. As of this beta, 2.0 is now feature complete, meaning I'll need you more than ever to try and find as many bugs as you can see. As you can. I don't know how to read properly, if you guys notice. I'm just destroying this content, but as you can see, Basically, this is how event distribution will work. It'll work with getting Pokemon as well as interacting with other players. As you can see, I'm interacting with Riley Testa and he's offering me a shiny Geodude for a Wormpool. Luckily, I caught a Wormpool here besides my Torchic starter. And now I'm able to trade this Wormpool with Riley and he's giving us his shiny Geodude as he said was his first shiny Pokemon ever, which is pretty awesome. Me, myself, I'm a huge fan of Pokemon. I'm a huge fan of shiny Pokemon. That's what I base most of my Pokemon videos on so this was a really cool thing to get from the developer of GBA for iOS 2.0 Riley Testa. Now you guys can expect that when GBA for iOS 2.0 Riley has told me that he will continue to do event distributions so I look forward to what he has in store for all of us and what type of event distributions he wants to release to public when GBA for iOS 2.0 comes out on February 19th. And that is all the features in GBA for iOS 2.0. I hope I didn't miss anything. I probably did, but you know, that happens. But anyways, as you can see, the iPad UI is brilliant. The iPhone UI is brilliant. This application in total is brilliant. A lot of people said, oh, I'll just jailbreak and I'll get GPSP phone. Well, many of you guys don't know, GBA for iOS 2.0 was built off GPSP phone. And to be honest, GBA for iOS 2.0 is the greatest emulator I've ever used on an iOS device. Maybe the greatest emulator I've ever used in general. I originally got and jailbroke my original iPhone in 2007 because I wanted to get a PSX for all Zod TTD emulator on my iOS device. And the whole reason that I have ever jailbroke my iDevice was because I wanted to play emulators on it. And this is honestly the best I'm not even joking here like a whole lot of respect and kudos goes to Riley test up for making the best emulator on iOS so far I mean it's so great and the fact that you can have it on jailbroken and non jailbroken i devices makes it even better and now the last thing I want to show you guys is just kind of I don't want to say it's me bragging off but it's credits you guys can see here in the credits you'll see Riley Testa's Twitter, Paul Thorson's Twitter, Alyssa's Twitter, all people that helped in the development of GBA for iOS 2.0 as long as well as there's a beta section so as you can see if you click on my name it takes me it takes you to your to my YouTube channel and as you can see you have the videos there and this will always be in GBA for iOS 2.0 and it's really special to me and if you guys go over here and watch some of my videos or subscribe like you're doing right now then I would really appreciate that and I'm just so humbled to be able to be a tester for GBA for iOS 2.0 thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed this video I got a little sentimental at the end but it's true I wouldn't have became a GBA for iOS 2.0 beta tester if it wasn't for you guys, my subscribers, the operation. So thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you all. And if you haven't joined the operation, I don't know what you're waiting for. Hit that subscribe button and welcome to the family. But anyways, if you haven't already, how about some more incentive and some hype for my subscribers? Next Saturday, I'm going to be hosting a live stream with my fellow starters, Mythical, or Dario, Tyler, the 120th Whisper, and we're going to be having special guest 
Riley Testa, the developer of GBA for iOS, and his UI specialist and design master, Paul Thorson. So they're both going to be on a podcast answering your questions. So the way you answer, you ask them a question is simple. Just tweet out using the hashtag FAQ for iOS and ask them any question you'd like. We're going to try to answer as many questions as possible in the podcast. So stick around and subscribe for a video explaining when the podcast will happen. It'll be on Saturday, the time, all that good stuff. And subscribe so that you're notified when the podcast happens. Besides that, you guys already know that I'm going to be making a video the second GBA for iOS 2.0 is released. So you can expect that. As well as check out the other two videos on screen. They're very important for GBA for iOS 2.0. And I'll see you in the next video.